sea trout and salmon pattern that has definitely lasted the test of time is the silver stoat. Great pattern. You can tie it in a you know, myriad of different lengths. If you look at you know, the likes of collie dogs, for example, just that black and silver combination. Just a, a, a winning formula quite often for, for salmon and sea trout. Um, it's one of my favorite patterns for sea trout especially in a double format in a falling flood or fishing in the evening before moving on to uh, onto the night time saying that you know black and silver for night time you can't go far wrong you really can't so uh, I'm gonna make or show you uh, the version I normally fish in the uh, in a falling flood or in the evening uh, for the sea trout and the one I've got here is actually tied on a partridge double. This one in particular is the the Patriot, the Partridge Patriot uh, double, and that is one of the I think it's a limited edition in red. So this is size 10. In fairness, I tend to fish this in size 10 and down, uh, so uh, 12s and 14s depending on the amount of uh, yeah, residual light but also if you're fishing it in a falling flood depends how much colour is left in the water uh, but yeah this is a size 10 uh, you could also fish it at night on some of the bigger sizes as well but just you know, vary accordingly it doesn't have to be a red hook you can use uh, just a standard black nickel thread is going to be uh, a fire orange fire orange thread in 10 -0. Fever's 10 -0. Start off just by catching it in just shy of that eye or where you would normally finish the head of the fly. Just give it a, a base of thread down to there. I take it up a couple of turns. What we're going to then do is I'm going to use some uh, golden pheasant. I'm going to use the uh, the crest, just one small feather for the tail. So just utilize that natural curvature. It's going to point upwards. And what you can do is make sure that it's point in the right direction with you. Just pointing up. You're happy with the alignment. Tie it in long and then just draw it back until you've got the desired length. Make sure it's sitting properly and then secure. We can do at this point as well, just take one turn underneath. Again, just make sure that it is kicking up slightly. Pull that back a bit more. Don't want it to be too long. Okay, that's good. Take that feather down the body. Again, by doing so, you're going to create an even body. Don't take anything into this head section here because that will just allow you to have a neater head at the end. Body is going to be um, flat uh, braid in holographic silver. Uh, this is, I'm not sure if they're different sizes in fairness, this is the Lagatron uh, version. So it's got a short length of that. Secure it in where you finished tying over those butts and bring it back down towards the tail like so take it up the body just in touching turns the beauty of this stuff is I don't bother you can take if you haven't got this stuff you can use holographic tinsel and rib it with uh, silver wire uh, I just tend to use this because it's quicker and the beauty of this is you don't need to rib over it uh, so it makes everything a bit quicker. It's multi-fibred so even if a fish does bite into one section and it's woven uh, it doesn't tend to just un completely unravel. So just make sure that's nice and secure up there. What we then do is put a wing in. So you can use squirrel at this point. Uh, I tend to use uh, Excuse my pronunciation, but it's uh, American opossum. I think that's how it's uh, how it's pronounced. I just like it. It's uh, it's pretty fine, 
but not too fine. So it's not um, it's 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 a nice in between um, fur. So it's not as as coarse as squirrel, but then not as fine as um, Arctic fox, for example. So it holds its shape well, but it's actually easier to work with than squirrel. So I'm going to take a generous pinch to begin with, because what happens is I'm going to take some of those longer ends, just like so. So I'm starting just to make a, a, a nice wing, and then just take out some of the finer underfur. So you're just left with a nicely tapered wing that's actually going to be really easy to work with, like so length of the wing more or less to the um, end of the tail just kind of marry marry the two up that's just a, a general rule of thumb and measuring in point pinch and loop again this stuff's really easy to work with take it over a few turns so that's your wing in position snip off the, the base as close as you can to the hook because otherwise they become really difficult to cut into later by the eye. One uh, so one strand of flash, don't go overboard with, with flash. This is like a micro um, crystal hair, crystal flash, crystal hair uh, in pearl. I'm just going to take one strand. So all we do with this, so literally you've just got one strand, take it behind the thread, take it behind the thread, and then slide it up and align it directly down the center. And then when you're happy, just take the thread over it. So what you then have is you have two strands. Um, basically it's just a double, single sand, a strand doubled. Snip them off. Don't put them both at the same length, but aim towards the end of the wing. What we then do, is, you can see that just sitting there now. Perfect. Finishing it off, a head hackle. Uh, I'm going to use, you can actually tie this in as a false hackle if you wanted to, which would just be stripping hackle fibres, uh, stacking them, and then just putting them in underneath here. I'm actually going to utilize just a, a hen uh, a hen hackle, a black hen hackle. It's going to find a suitable size one. What you can do, but rather than pulling it straight from the uh, from the cape, just measure one up just to see where it sits. Uh, and then if you're happy with that feather, then draw that one off. Uh, look for it to finish roughly around the uh, the point of the uh, of the hook that's you know just a, a again just a rule of thumb where hackles should finish it doesn't really matter but you know if somebody is being pedantic that's where you should aim for so i've got a nice little feather here what i then do i'm going to tie this in from the tip i strip off the the butt sections uh the flue and then just strip the head to strip that back just get me a tying in point strip it all uh, stroke it all back like so that gives me th that little tag there hopefully you can see that what I then do is just take my scissors in snip it off there and that gives me my tying in point I tie that in make sure it's secure because otherwise that hackle will pull take it back over like so and then you got you got two options at this point essentially because we have this stalk here I tend to just hold on to that for the hackling or you can use hackle pliers so just stroke these feathers try and double them up but make them so they're not bunched together and work each turn stroke the fibers back each turn just keep stroking them back You bring them back. How many turns will actually di you know, be dictated by uh, 
the quality these, this isn't a particularly good cape in fairness you may only need a couple of turns if you've got a, a really great hen hackle a hen cape you may only need a couple of turns this one's probably going to take three or four there you go happy with that just bring it up tie over that stem make sure a good couple of turns pull it down to make it nice and secure and then we pull all of these fibers back just to give us a nice clear head section and this is we're still tying over that base of that hackle stem and that point we then come in with the scissors and snip off so you can see really neat neat little head there and that's the fly done so we just you can see that little trigger point in the head with the the fire orange thread just sets it off so well so bring the uh, whip finish up brush everything back and just create a little trigger point in the head here Ooh, just slipping that bear with me there you go pull that in tight snip it off and that's the fly done so great little pattern uh, just basically a silver stout couple of very a couple of differences probably with the holographic tinsel in the body and there's that fire orange thread in the head but really really simple pattern but a great great pattern for uh, for salmon and for for sea trout give it a go and uh, I hope it brings you luck next time you're on the river tight lines <laughs>